a mod widely considered to be one of the best mods was recently added to Terraria 1.4, the Thorium mod. It has everything you could ever ask for in a mod. It's got weapons, it's got bosses, but most importantly, it has three new classes, the Bard, the Healer, and the Thrower, all with unique weapons, armor, and equipment. I chose to play as the Bard. Will I be able to save Terraria using my expertise in the art of music, or will I end up as every other washed up artist? I had the worst first impression of this mod. My first hit consisted of me finding just about zero ore and dying over and over and over and over and over again. I have never had this bad of an experience in my first day of any mod literally ever. Luckily, my second day was significantly better. I found the Abigail summon. She didn't do very much damage, but she kept the monsters at bay, which was nice. Later on, I started making pumpkin armor and seeing what I could make with what I currently had, which was pretty much just wood. But I found out that I could make a whistle. It was pretty shit, but it was nice to use a weapon that was completely different from the base game classes, and it, it also made a funny noise when used. These musical weapons from the bard class introduced empowerment buffs. Every weapon will give some sort of buff, whether that be defense or movement speed. Each of these empowerments also had a level from 1 to 4. The better the weapon, the more powerful the empowerment. Once I finished my pumpkin armor, I began to look around my world and I ended up finding a flute, so I put my whistle into retirement already. I ended the day by starting my house. On day 3, I realized that I hated how slow the respawn was, so I added the better respawn mod, but it caused me to spawn as soon as I died. The issue wasn't respawning right away, it was that it would probably become an issue once I started fighting bosses, because if I died, this mod would have just kept the boss alive instead of despawning it. So I instead downloaded Shorter Respawn Time. After the whole mod fiasco, I started my elevator to get some stone and maybe some more. While doing so, my brain acknowledged Abigail's voice, and it was honestly kind of scary. I continued mining and found a bunch of ore and chests. Once I got back home, I made a Platinum Aegis, which is basically just a shield, and I made a bugle horn. This was the moment where I decided I wanted to quit everything and pursue music. So I became a bard. On day 4, I did a bunch of research into what I could potentially make as a bard, and it was quite a bit. Later that day, despite only having 5 hearts, I decided to fight the first boss, the Grand Thunderbird. I had an embarrassing loss the first time, but defeated him on the second try. From the fight, I got a weapon called the Didgeridoo, and it was fire. I finished the day by continuing the elevator. On day 5, I made more housing and continued the elevator. While mining, I found some smooth coal that's used to make a bunch of bard stuff like a grand piano, and I found thorium ore that could be used to make these things called inspiration fragments. When it comes to being a bard, the weapons you can use are ranged, but you can't use them forever due to the inspiration circle thing. So just like ammo, I would need to make inspiration fragments to increase how many times I could shoot. I wanted to increase my inspiration as soon as possible, so the next day I went to an altar and made 10 inspiration fragments. I would have made more, but there are multiple tiers for these fragments, and I had reached the limit for the first tier. Afterwards, I defeated the King Slime and continued the elevator. While mining, I came across these chests on top of some sort of pillar, and they were loaded. Not with anything particularly good, but loaded nonetheless. Later that night, I checked out the new NPCs, but they weren't of much use. I made this pickaxe out of thorium ore at some point that had more pickaxe power than the Nightmare or Hellbringer pickaxe, so I continued the elevator on day 7 thinking that I could mine Hellstone. While continuing the elevator, I found this grapple called a spring hook that instead of hooking onto things, it would propel you away and it was awesome for maneuvering around above the surface. On day 8, I finally finished the elevator and came to the conclusion that I could not mine Hellstone, but hey, at least the elevator was done. I spent most of the day beefing up my health and waiting for Nightfall to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, but once night finally came, I lost. I fought the Eye of Cthulhu super early on day 9 and 1. Later on the goblin army showed up, but since they were taking too long to die, I blocked off my doors and made magic storage. I finished off the goblin army and used the yew wood they dropped to make a sitar. On day 10, I lost the Brain of Cthulhu, but I got plenty of ore and plenty of tissue samples. I then made the Deathbringer pickaxe, a few cool weapons, and made the Noble Armor. The next day, I defeated the Brain of Cthulhu, found the dungeon, and unfortunately, lost to the Skeletron. On day 12, I just wanted to wait until night to fight the Skeletron again, but in an attempt to not waste time, I made this tracker thing to locate the next boss, Viscount's Lair. 
Once I had a rough location as to where it was, I went and did a little blood moon to defeat the mini boss patchwork. Later that night, I lost to the Skeltron again. The next day, I found Viscount Slayer, and boy, was it menacing. I attempted to defeat him and lost on my first try, but on the second try, things went a little differently. I defeated Viscount, but I didn't really get anything of use other than a Vampire's Catalyst that allows me to turn into a bat. On day 14, I cleared up some area for the Old One's army and finally defeated the Skeletron. I spent the entirety of day 15 in the dungeon because there was actually some new shit to see unlike some other mods. There were new enemies, I killed a mini boss on accident named the Illusionist, I got a bone trumpet that was unbelievably good, and much more that I probably didn't see. On day 16, I began searching for either a marble or granite cave to fight either one of the next two bosses, the buried champion for the marble or the granite energy storm for the granite, obviously. I eventually found a marble cave first, which meant I would be taking on the buried champion first, so I finished out the day by making an arena for it. The next day, I finished the area and made a bronze tuning fork out of the bronze alloy fragments that had been dropping from the marble enemies. I only really wanted the fork because it made enemies take 10% more damage. With it, I defeated the buried champion, but it was a pretty close call. I ended up getting wings from him and ended the day getting some more money. By getting more money, I mean defeating the brain of Cthulhu over and over and over. It was a genius plan by selling all the crimptain ore that you get from him. It was absolute genius. I began looking for a granite cave, but after a bit I decided that it would be better to let it come to me. Meaning that I would just continue on until I happened to run into one. So I went to get strange alien tech to make the spawner for the next boss, Star Scouter. I figured since it was called Alien Tech, it would be in space or something, but after looking around and not being able to find any, I took to Google. After some Googling, I found out that these UFOs dropped them around a meteor landing site. I started and continued farming these things into Day 19. Once I had gotten enough Alien Tech, I went into the sky and started making the Star Scouter Arena. On Day 20, I finished the arena and began my brawl with the Star Scouter.
I had defeated the Star Scouter, and with it out of my way, I began making the Hell Highway. I somehow managed to finish the Hell Highway the next day and started looking for a guide voodoo doll. While farming for the doll, I ran into a granite cave, just as I knew I would, and defeated the granite energy storm. I then continued to farm for a guide voodoo doll. I spent almost all of day 22 farming for this goddamn doll, but a voodoo demon just wouldn't spawn. Eventually one spawned and I defeated the wall of flesh. Day 23 was spent mining altars and getting through all of the hard mode ores, you know, just all the boring stuff. But on day 24, I found something new to craft with called geodes. Once I had a handful of these geodes, I used them to make a fucking saxophone. And it was awesome. Now that I had a weapon that was good at killing all of these hard mode enemies, I started making marching band armor. All it required was silk and souls of night, so I wasn't too worried about anything, but I should have been. Getting souls of night was awful. There were so many enemies and I needed so many souls. I spent all of day 25 getting souls of night and I eventually made the marching band armor. I used day 26 to experiment with some new weapons. As much as I liked the saxophone, I needed to know if something was better. I made the hell's bell and a violin. The bell was pretty good, but the violin definitely lacked. Doing all of this also helped me test out the new armor and it was really good. I spent the rest of the day getting 30 souls of light and 30 souls of night to make the next level of inspiration fragments, when I only needed 10 of each. You'll see how dumb I am in just a minute. The next two days were spent farming for the absurd amount of souls that I thought I needed, only being interrupted by a fucking goblin army. On day 29, I finally had everything I needed to make all of these inspiration fragments, so I quickly defeated the goblin army, got this unbelievably amazing shadow flame warhorn, and made 30 inspiration fragments. You know the little text that like appears on an item before you craft it? Yeah, the text for these fragments says that it'll increase my inspiration from 1 up to 30. I thought this meant that I could gain up to 30 more inspiration, but what it actually meant was that these fragments can be used up until my base inspiration was at 30. I made 30 inspiration fragments and I was only able to use 10 of them. I, I'm very, very dumb. I ended the day making various bard equipment. I continued making various bard equipment for all of day 30, such as the epic mouthpiece. Later that night, the Skeletron Prime spawned, but I obviously lost. The next day, I started a blizzard and defeated the Borean Strider. Pause. If you were curious as to why I only give certain bosses the epic boss fight, it's because I only do it for the bosses that provided more of a challenge over the others. Unpause. I couldn't think of anything else to do to better prepare myself, so I attempted to defeat the Fallen Boulder, but lost. Later that night, I figured if I got such a good weapon from the Goblin Army that maybe I could fight the pirates and get another good weapon, so I spawned him in. On day 32, I defeated the pirates and unfortunately didn't get another barred weapon. I went to go fight the Fallen Boulder again, but I lost. Though, this fight made me realize that I am too slow and it kept catching up to me, so I spent the rest of the day looking for an Anklet of the Wind in the jungle. The next day, I realized I could have just bought it from one of the NPCs, so I stopped searching and I just bought it. Now, before anybody mentions that this is cheating, I only do this so that the playthrough looks and feels better. It's not really that fun to play or watch someone grind for hours against something that everybody already knows about. I am also saying this to justify me doing it again later. Anyways, I finished upgrading my boots, but the Fallen Boulder still caught up to me. So as a last resort, I bought a horse and I fought this dumbass rock for the last time.
Defeating the fallen boulder was the beginning of a beautiful rampage that I would go on for the next several days. On day 34, I made frozen wings for more mobility. Afterwards, I pretty much just waited until night, so to kill time, I defeated the Old One's army. Once night finally arrived, I started the destroyer fight. I ended up defeating the destroyer early on day 35. With my newly acquired souls of might, I was hoping to make a weapon or something, but to make anything bard related, I needed a soul forge. But in order to make the soul forge, I needed every single soul, which means I have to fight all of the mechanical bosses with the same gear that I have, and it was going to be very tough. And to make things better, I ended the day realizing that I never found the mechanic in the dungeon. So I went to go get her, but on day 36 I had to give up my search because I just could not find her. Which means not only do I have to use the same gear to fight the twins, but I also cannot use teleporters like I usually do with the arena. Nonetheless, I made the arena without the teleporters and started the twins fight. I defeated the twins early on day 37 on my first try somehow. I then decided to waste my entire day and wait until night just to lose the Skeletron Prime, not once, but twice. I figured I wasn't going to beat the Skeletron Prime with the equipment I currently had, so on day 38 I noticed that there was a weapon I could make, not with the souls, but with the hollowed bar, the hollowed megaphone. Afterwards, while waiting for it to be night, I got a blessed apple. Once night had arrived, I started the Skeletron Prime fight. I defeated it on day 39 and the megaphone proved itself to be very good. Now that I had all of the souls, I made the soul forged and used it to make cyberpunk armor and the prime's roar. The cyberpunk armor introduced a new mechanic, called the armor abilities, and this particular set allowed me to switch the color of the armor between four different colors all with different buffs. Red for flat damage and regular damage, green for movement speed and flight time, purple for maximum resource and resource regeneration, and blue for defense and damage reduction. And with how awful I am at this game, I obviously kept it on blue. The next boss to fight was the Lich, and in order to spawn him, I needed to use an ancient phylactery, I think is how it's pronounced, at a graveyard. But what I didn't know is that there was a literal, like, actual graveyard right behind the dungeon entrance. I got there very early, so to kill time, I, ch I changed a few gravestones. Once night had arrived, I spawned and lost to the Lich twice. On day 40, I did some research, and I had totally forgotten that after the mechanical bosses are defeated, I could now get Chlorophyte, so that's exactly what I did. Once I had gotten home with the Chlorophyte, I made the Green Tambourine, which was pretty good, and the Turtle Drums that weren't as good. For all of day 41, all I wrote in my notes is, Pirates are approaching, they are about to get fucked, and waiting for night, in parentheses. I ended up losing another two times to the Lich, but that wouldn't stop me. I didn't have much time before the sun would rise, so I summoned the Lich for the final time. The Lich had been defeated on day 42, so I can now start preparing for the Plantera. Those preparations included looking for life fruit, but not finding any, and finding the mechanic to make the arena. I started day 43 looking for a Plantera bulb. Once I had found one, I began making the arena. I spent all day doing this, and I continued making the arena for the next three whole days. It would have been done sooner if it wasn't for the absurd amount of enemies that just kept spawning. 
On day 47, I defeated the Plantera first try, like always, and made this weapon called the Mog using the Bloom Weave that it dropped. This weapon was pretty good for crowds, but I wouldn't end up using it for that long. I then defeated the Plantera again to get more Bloom Weave to make ornate armor. The next day, I went to explore all the new stuff in the dungeon and came across a new material called Dark Matter, and that one component ended up replacing all of the weapons and armor I had just made. After spending all of day 48 getting materials, on day 49 I made the Maestro armor. The armor ability associated with this set allowed me to summon a chorus of music playing ghosts that would harm enemies. I also made a clarinet that sucked, and a bassoon that was awesome dude. On day 50 I did everything you could do with the jungle temple. I found it, explored it, used these new solar pebbles dropped from the enemies to make the final level of inspiration fragments, made this cool homing weapon called the Pungi, and defeated the golem. On day 51, I went to investigate and see what the aquatic depths were because I remembered seeing a status message that displayed after defeating the Plantera that said, something stirs in the aquatic depths. I put two and two together and figured this was for the next boss, the Forgotten One. There wasn't much to the aquatic depths, so I got started on the arena right away. For it to spawn, I needed to have three abyssal shadows in my inventory at any given time, and while making the arena, I kept accidentally spawning it and dying instantly. Once I finished the arena, I tried to fight it a few times, but I kept losing instantly. I just wasn't fast enough. Things were looking pretty grim until I killed a whale and got an item called How to Speak Whale, a biography, that summoned the rideable whale mount. With this new mount, I summoned the forgotten one for the final time. I had finally defeated the Forgotten One, but I didn't get anything of use, so I went and defeated the Lunatic Cultist to start the Lunar Events. I ended the day working on taking down the Nebula Pillar. I spent days 53 through 57 dealing with the pillars. Along the way, I made an asphalt path for the Moon Lord and made a few useful weapons called the Shooting Star Blast Guitar and the Terrarium Auto Harp. Once all of the pillars had been taken down, the Moon Lord spawned, but I lost. Days 58 through 68 were an absolute living hell. No matter what I did, I just couldn't defeat the Moon Lord. Every single time I tried, I would lose, and losing meant I would need more fragments, so I kept having to redo all of the pillars. I didn't know what I was doing wrong in the moment, but looking back on it now, there was a lot I could have done, like I could have made the path longer, or I could have fully reforged all of my gear. Eventually, I was able to defeat him on day 68, but a new issue arose. I couldn't make anything new. I either needed more Luminite or Shooting Star Fragments, and I didn't even get the Bard Weapon from the Moon Lord. I just spent the rest of the day redoing some more pillars and getting even more fragments. I continued doing pillars on day 69. Later that night, I attempted the Primordials to see what they were like. At the time, I thought they were alright. They, they even seemed easy. But that would change very, very quickly. Due to the Moon Lord, I had spent day 70 doubting my past choices. Should I even pursue music? Will I be successful in the end? 
I didn't know, but there was no hope left. But then suddenly I felt a spark of inspiration. I knew I had to make music. I knew I had to continue being a bard. After some research, I found out about terrarium equipment. By the end of the day, I had made terrarium boots and had started making terrarium wings. On day 71, I finished the wings and made the terrarium defender, which was just an awesome shield. I finished the day with some more pillar action. I was still on pillar duty for the next day, but once I had enough fragments, I summoned the moon lord and defeated him on my first try for this recording. It, this achievement was monumental. I was able to finish the shooting star armor set and the set bonus was awesome. It gave me 5% increased damage for every single different empowerment I had. I spent the next 4 days defeating the moon lord over and over and over again, hoping to get the bard weapon drop from him. I cannot even remember how many times I had killed him and how many towers I had to take down to get more fragments for each and every single fight, but it was an absurd amount. Eventually I did end up getting the weapon, and it was amazing. It was now finally time to move on from the Moon Lord and defeat the final boss, the Primordials. I have no clue how many days had passed since I started trying to defeat the Primordials, but it was a lot. In the beginning, I kept losing no matter what I did. I kept getting further every time, but I would still lose. I would notice the flaw in my fighting, and I would fix it. With there being three Primordials, I had used a different fighting strategy per Primordial because they had all moved at different paces and they all had different fighting styles. When I noticed I wasn't making any more progress, I decided to make one of the biggest arenas I had ever made to date, and it was going to be completely based around running away and regeneration. I used campfires and heart lamps, along with the peacefulness of having a home to boost my regeneration. I even made big gaps in between the platforms so that I could fall faster and further away from the boss. Once I had finished the arena, I continued fighting the primordials. I had gotten to a point where every time I fought them, I could defeat them, but I always lost to the second and final stage, Dream Eater. Now this guy, he was fucking fast, and he shot so many goddamn projectiles, it was absolutely insane. I was, I was healing at the nurse and everything, but nothing would work because as soon as I had healed, I would make it back to the arena and lose all of my health in an instant. I, I didn't know what to do anymore. I was losing all of my hope. But then it hit me. The portal gun that I've actually never used before could get me back to the arena in an instant. It could be all I needed to defeat this boss. Using my new arena, the portal gun, and the power of music, I fought this boss for the final time.
I, I had finally defeated the Primordials in Dream Eater and deduced that it was all because of the portal gun. From the Primordials, I got a Dormant Hammer, which when combined with the Family Heirloom that I got at the very beginning made Mjolnir, Thor's Hammer. They also dropped plenty of Essence for me to make everything endgame. I made the Rhapsodist Armor and the Soloist Hat. The set bonus allowed me to have unlimited inspiration and significantly faster use for a short period of time. I then made the Sousaphone, Holoforner, and the Edge of Imagination, all of which were awesome and gave me amazing empowerments. The next day I made the Black Midi and messed around with my gear for a bit. I decided that the Holoforner was my favorite out of everything. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I had saved Terraria using the power of music, so there was only one more question left to ask. Does anybody want to buy my mixtape? 